If you're looking to get into DevOps folks and you're looking to use the native tools to AWS then this tutorial is an excellent little tutorial provided to you by these two AWS people here and a good introduction to CICD, Continuous Integration, Continuous Deployment Pipelines and this here will validate your Terraform code folks and you can cater it to your needs, you can intertwine it with other services like Jenkins and GitHub as well. There's more than one way to skin a cat as they say. I really like this here because I broke this a lot. I learned quite a bit about it folks and that's like I say, the best way to learn things is to break it. And because it's span up in Terraform and the code's all supplied to you here, this will cost you very, very little to play around with because you can spin it all up, do what you need to, configure it, mess around with it, break it, and then take it all down again, folks, so that you don't have to incur any costs. And then the code is there for you to use again to spin up your resources, your infrastructure as code. That's the beauty about infrastructure as code, in this case, Terraform. Uh, it takes you through different phases that are explained in the summary here. It'll run you through like uh, static code analysis as well, utilizing the likes of TFSEC, TFLint checkoff, Terraform validate, Terraform format. You'll become familiar with all these folks, so you will. and. They are great tools that are used quite a bit that you hear people talk about in various tutorials that I've heard. So you'll really get a good feel for how they work, folks, and the output of those. Uh, there's a good little architectural diagram here. It does exactly what it says on the tin here. I actually took Terraform Destroy off it. I wanted to see what the you know the infrastructure looked like in the AWS console. Um, what it will do is it will destroy everything but your artifacts and all the files that actually get spun up from your code deployment will be saved in S3 um, and the, the deployment will all be taken down again to save you costs as well folks all right but I actually wanted to see what was there and be able to configure and play with it a little bit if you needed to try something in the console first before you then go and add that as an addition to your Terraform code, then that's a good way to do things, folks. But again, play with it. You know, ask questions as well. Speak to people that you work along with that you're possibly looking up to, like a mentor, and ask them questions about things. Uh, as I say, folks, it was a good introduction for me to get into the likes of the native tools for AWS, for CICD, and the code is provided to you in this uh, repository here in GitHub. As you can see here, there's a multitude of modules here that you can dig into and configure. And like I said, I've built upon this here since I've started using it. Currently, I'm sitting at this amount of modules and I've got SNS topics set up. I've got CloudWatch events set up so I can get things sent to my mobile phone to say the pipeline has failed at this stage or someone's put in, you know, a pull request, you know, and uh, they need an approver which is also incorporated into this too and it'll allow you as well folks to configure the likes of identity and access management so only the people with the access privileges that they require can go in and possibly approve a pull request uh, do other various things as well so it's a good all-round thing to work on to get a feel for a lot of services not just CICD folks. I am identity and access management is a tricky little area for me and I really got a good feel about how it works just doing this tutorial and building on this here. Um, again this here was deployed uh, manually so it was but I then worked on it a bit more and I actually deployed another pipeline through it and I added Lambda as well to it so I could actually automate the deployment of more um, code pipelines utilizing Lambda. Again folks there was a multitude of tutorials around it to actually add these bits on and you could go absolutely mad with it so you couldn't throw all sorts of automation into it but I would say just start out with the basic one that they give you here and get an understanding of it and then start to add to it. After about a month I was sort of comfortable around it to start adding little bits onto it and just see how you know the Terraform code worked as well. And I deployed it through Cloud9 and that's a native tool folks in AWS just like your uh, VS Code. And I did add a couple of little automation bits to it with regards to bash scripts to spin up my architectures. And you can set up your uh, 
Terraform state file and state locks in S3 and DynamoDB accordingly, utilizing your Terraform code, folks. And that's a good thing to get across as well, how the state file works. And I configured a little backend setup here with the bash script beyond the scope of this tutorial folks I could cover off on another one if you like and it's just simple automation to save me having to do a lot of click ups okay but it was just a matter of going in if I do an ls list all you can see the bash script there I've already made it an executable and if I just uh, run the bash script Then that will spin up my back end, my S3 buckets to store the state files and also the lock file, the DynamoDB setup. And this is just going through now. It's actually installing Terraform into my Cloud9 environment too. So any further deployments with Terraform will go ahead successfully. And what I would say is, folks, utilizing Cloud9, I'm utilizing the free tier here, just a T2 micro instance. And what I did before I started spinning up my architecture was I added a little bit more storage to the Elastic Block Store because it can fail this environment if you run out of storage. So go into your EC2 instance, check the storage and up the space. Um, in this case, I went from 10 gigabytes to 20 gigabytes. But have a feel about, again, it's a bit of a learning curve. It's beyond the scope of this tutorial. And... Uh, you'll start to get a feel for why this here fails as well. And it was a good learning curve actually digging into a bit of a, how this Cloud9 works because at the start, because it was VS Code um, Pro, I actually was trying to pull holes in this, but now I'm actually pro, you know, Cloud9 because I'm used to it. It's like anything, the first time you see it, you'll pull it apart, but it's like anything, you start to see the good side of it so in this case folks have spun up four s3 buckets and the dynamo db tables to store the state and the lock files and i can utilize each of these to deploy into different environments in this case i'm going to use the management bucket because i want to deploy like i said another pipeline utilizing this pipeline i'm delivering this pipeline here via the command line but I can utilize this pipeline that's being created via the command line to then push more and pipelines into possibly another account you know or you might want to keep them all in the one account so that's the back end all set up I then created another little bit of automation in the next folder where all my main configuration files are to build the pipeline all the modules that are shown here and that's again as you can see here in an executable uh, bash script file here and if i just execute that it'll ask me what environment you want to put it in like i said i want to do it into the management this is the bash script file that i created asking me these questions um is it a change of environment the reason i Put that question there folks was because if you are changing environments and you're reconfiguring the state file then that will prevent the state from being overwritten so in this case i've got different uh, state buckets i'm deploying into different environments i will need to reconfigure the infrastructure to spin up and push the new state into then another bucket so that's why i'm doing that answering that question so it's initializing the back end here what it'll go through folks it'll give us a full readout of what it's going to deploy and it'll ask us to we want to go ahead um and then we can go ahead and this will just spin up the full architecture of the pipeline we spoke about at the start that is basically in this architectural diagram here okay it's asking me there do I want to go ahead? It's telling me there's going to be 33 resources. You can go through all the resources and just check to make sure everything's going to be to what you need. If it's not, then you can just say no. In this case, I'm saying yes because I've deployed this before. As well, point to note, folks, this is going to go through and deploy another pipeline here. You can configure all your, you know, a uh, static analysis tools to go through and check everything out i have cleaned this code up as much as possible 
to avoid any you know things getting flagged up with regards to like you know you could have security groups that are wide open you could have identity and access management uh, with administrators administrative access just to name a couple of things that them um, static code analysis tools will pick up folks simple things as well like the formatting of your code you know it's going to automatically run through terraform format fmt and those are the likes of things that'll pick up little uh, sign text errors as well that you might have in the code so they're good things i also added in a docker file here as well folks uh, you can as part of a aws code build run a native um docker image that they provide in this case i created a lightweight image only with the things that i want to actually utilize with the deployment of terraform so the likes of a tfsec uh, checkoff and tflint those were the things i wanted to utilize so they were the only things i put in the docker image to be deployed making it a bit more lightweight and making the what do you call it the pipe code pipeline run a little bit faster but more than one way in the skin of cat, like I say, you can change it to your need, folks, and just play around with it. Again, I had a lot of playing around with the Docker file just to compare it to the speed of what the native Docker images were that were already provided by CodeBuild. And I found that this lightweight image here ran a lot quicker. It knocked a third off the time to actually run the code pipeline. Okay. And there are other things you can utilize as well, like caching um the pipeline to the different stages and that will speed things up again but i'll just pause it here just to let this docker image build and push up to elastic container registry in aws and then we'll jump back on so we'll see you in a minute so that's the docker image created folks and pushed up to the elastic container registry and that build takes a lot of time out of folks actually having to build that image each time you would run the code pipeline so it's only pulling that image down and if you do actually change the docker file image i've put in a little bit of uh, code to actually check the digest and if that's changed then it'll rebuild that image to suit whatever you've changed it to and push it up to the elastic container registry again but that's it in a nutshell folks for the length of time in this video we've created our back end to store our state file and our state lock and we've spun up the actual pipeline in aws it's beyond the scope of this a uh, tutorial to actually go through everything but you can see there just in aws code pipeline that this pipeline is sitting ready to build now and it's got everything in it to utilize your code commit to store your code repository just like you would do in github and it's got your stages in code build as well to go through each one validate plan apply all right destroy if required but folks it's a great little tutorial again i'll drop the link in the actual description below and if you've got any questions please drop them in the comments but as always i will leave this one with you and wish you all the best take care good luck